Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. Decided to take a little break from Project 1500 this week, do something a little bit different. So in today's video, I'm going to start to unlock some of the mysteries of the GM computer command control system that's in your 1980s or early 1990s General Motors vehicle. So if these things have always bugged you, you can never seem to get them work right, you can't figure them out, and you'd like a little better understanding of what's going on in that little metal box under your dashboard or in your kick panel, stay tuned because I'm going to break it down for you as best I can. Let's get started. All right, so what is the GM Computer Command Control System? This is the electronic brain that controls the fuel delivery system in your 1981 or newer GM car or light truck. Now by 1981 standards, these things were pretty cutting edge. By today's standards, not so much. But if you think about it, GM really did a good job because these things had to work in a range of temperatures, in a range of operating conditions, and deliver an optimal air fuel mixture. Why would they want to do this, you might ask yourself. Well, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of an oversimplified breakdown. If you've worked with a mechanical carburetor, you know that those things work on the law of averages, meaning a carburetor tuned for 30 degree weather and a carburetor on point tuned for 90 degree weather, they're going to be off on the other, on the other end because carburetors operate in the law of averages. Uh, GM decided that they were going to take some of those averages out and put a computer in the car that could dial everything and get it as precise as it possibly could with the technology at the time to give you an optimal air-fuel mixture so that your catalytic converter could do the best job it possibly could. That is the whole general point of what the GM Computer Command Control System is supposed to do. How does it do it? Let's take a look. So how does this system work, you might ask? Well, you have an ECM. That's the brain of the system. That's that metal box that's located in the kick panel. If you have a rear wheel drive car on the passenger side or underneath the dash in a front wheel drive car. That ECM, ECM excuse me, contains the PROM chip. That is the customizable chip that tells the control module exactly what you have under the hood. Is it a two and a half liter Iron Duke? Is it an Oldsmobile 307, Chevy 305? Buick 2316 and so on. What kind of tires do you have? What kind of transmission do you have? What kind of carburetor do you have? It lets the ECM know all that information. It's written there on the chip. Now, throughout the system you have various sensors. Some of these may change depending on the car you drive, but you're always going to have an oxygen sensor, a temperature sensor, some type of throttle position sensor, a vacuum sensor, and a barometric pressure sensor to detect the pressure of the outside air. You're also going to have a brake switch, a tachometer, a vehicle speed sensor, and it might be another few types depending on the car you drive. Like if you drive a front wheel drive car, it may have a mass airflow sensor. So all of these things feed information to the electronic control module. It analyzes that information and tells the mixture control solenoid on your carburetor exactly how to richen or lean the mixture to make, try and maintain that optimal 14.7 to 1. Now does it do it perfectly? No. Is it slow? Yes. That's why if you hook a dwell meter up to that green terminal and test it, the dwell varies. It goes back and forth. It doesn't hold steady at 30 because the system is constantly richening the mixture then when it gets too rich it leans the mixture out. That's how it controls the fuel mixture in your system. It also controls the torque converter lockup. When you're in third or fourth gear going a certain speed at a certain time, it'll lock the torque converter up for better fuel economy on the highway. And it also controls a few of the emission systems like telling the EGR valve when to open and close, telling your evaporative fuel system when to open and close, and a few other things. Now that I've kind of given you a breakdown on how the ECM <coughs> receives and processes its data, let's take a look at the various modes that it can operate in. All right, so you've gotten in your car, you've turned the key, <coughs> cranked the engine, and now it's started. 
your ECM is in startup mode. It's going to give a full rich mixture to the carburetor because cars require a lot of fuel in startup. <coughs> it's going to take a look at your coolant temperature sensor, see what temperature your coolant's starting out at. That's going to determine how long it stays in startup mode. Should be no more than five to 10 seconds. All right, so now that the motor's running, it's been a few seconds, <clears throat> your ECM is then gonna go from startup mode to open loop mode. Now this means that the oxygen sensor is still too cold to get a reading out of, so the ECM has no idea what's going on with the exhaust. So what it's gonna do is, it's gonna look at your throttle position sensor and your vacuum. And based on those inputs, what angle your throttle's at, and how much vacuum the engine's putting out, it's gonna look at a predetermined table in its brain and figure out what a generally good air fuel mixture would be for those conditions. Every time it does that, it's gonna take a look back at your engine temp sensor and say, is it warm enough yet? Is it warm enough yet? Because it wants to go into closed loop mode. That's the optimal mode for this thing to be operating in. Now, if you have a check engine light, you're never gonna make it past this point. You're always gonna go, be going by that predetermined table of what an air fuel mixture should be. It's good enough, but it's not getting feedback from the O2 sensor, so it can't adjust it any further. All right, so let's look back at your coolant temperature sensor and said, hey, the engine's warm enough now. Let's take a look at the oxygen sensor and see what that's doing. Oh, that's warm enough too. <laughs> Let's go into closed loop mode. The engine's at full operating temperature, so it's getting the feedback that it needs from the oxygen sensor. Now what's gonna happen in this mode is the engine's gonna look at the throttle angle from the throttle position sensor, and it's gonna look at the oxygen sensor and see how much oxygen is in your exhaust stream. Based on those factors, it's going to adjust your air fuel mixture. <coughs> Call this a feedback system because it's getting feedback from the oxygen sensor saying we need to lean it out, we need to make it more rich, depending on what's going on. So closed loop mode is the mode you want to be at. There's two more modes that I want to explain, but I'm not going to get too far into them. Okay, another mode that's out there <coughs> is wide open throttle mode. The ECM will send a full rich command when it sees that your throttle position sensor <coughs> or your throttle angle is over 86%. This will give you the most power for when you're passing on the highway or maybe shooting down that drag strip. Hey, and the last and final mode that the ECM can operate in is shutdown mode. This gives a full lean command to the carburetor. It does this when your RPMs drop under 200 and your battery voltage drops to about nine when it sees that the alternator has stopped spinning. Hey you guys, if you followed along this far in the video, I'm sure you're interested in it. So why don't you just do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This way you can catch the next one in the series. <coughs> also, make sure you hit that like button. This way more people can check it out. I do appreciate it, thank you. Okay, so another thing that makes the GM3C system interesting, and that is it is self-diagnosing. Hence that check engine light that many of you have dealt with before. But when you start to diagnose problems with these things, you have to remember, it's a crude computer system. It works by voltages and time. It looks at certain sensors, it sees a certain voltage, and it also has an internal clock that keeps time of how long the engine's been running. So when you diagnose these problems, you have to think along those levels. Don't just assume that because you're getting a check engine light for a certain system that that sensor is bad. I'm gonna give you a quick example, and it's a very oversimplified example, but hopefully it'll get, to get you to think like the ECM works. I get a check engine light for a coolant temperature sensor low. The ECM says my coolant temperature is too low. How does the ECM reach that conclusion? It says the engine has been running for a certain amount of time. I should be seeing a certain voltage from the coolant temperature sensor 
indicating that the engine has reached a certain temperature. I'm not seeing this, something is wrong. I'm gonna pop on that check engine light. Now, a lot of people will just throw a coolant temperature sensor at it, assuming that because it's gotten that code that the sensor's bad. But think about how the ECM works. And this is, this is bad information, but I'm just gonna break it down as best I can so you start to understand it. If zero volts coming from the sensor is ice cold and five volts is full operating temperature, the ECM's saying zero volts. It's saying the engine has been running for so many seconds, I should be seeing four or five volts. I'm not. Sets a check engine light. Well, what if one of the wires that goes to that temperature sensor is grounded out and the engine isn't getting any voltage because it's going right to ground? Or what if your thermostat's stuck open? It's still going to set that code because it's not seeing that voltage at that time but your sensor is perfectly good. So when you start to diagnose these problems, don't just think about the sensor, think about everything that may affect the sensor, but make sure you check the wiring as well. All right, so that was it. Our quick and dirty little primer on the GM computer command control system. Part two of this series, I'm gonna start breaking down and explaining some of these sensors that give the ECM its information. So make sure you check that out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.